Have you ever played with dough? Well, isn't it a lot of fun to make different patterns out of it, of different shapes and sizes? You can make any pattern which you want from these dough. Now suppose I'm having tins of dough and I need to make the nose of my snowman from this dough. So how can I make it? You can see that this nose is actually in the shape of a cone. So what do I need to do? I need to fill up cones to make the nose of my snowman. So let me do that. Now you could see that from one uh, tin of dough, we could fill up three cones of our snowman. Now this tin of the dough is actually in a shape of a cylinder, which has a curved surface and two circular bases. And the cones that we have taken is actually of the same height as that of this tin cylinder. It, they also have the same radius as that of this cylinder. So the same height and same radius. So you notice one thing that whatever dough we had in this cylinder filled up three cones of our snowman. So that means whatever dough was present inside this has the capacity to fill up three cones exactly. Now those cones should have the same height and the same radius as that of those cylinder. So you know that the volume of that dough inside this cylinder can be calculated with the formula pi r square h. This is the formula for volume of a cylinder. Now, I know that this volume can be filled up in three cones. So what will be the volume of these cones? If the total volume of the dough in these three cones is pi r square h, then the volume of one cone or the volume of dough in one cone will be what? pi r square h divided by 3 because the total dough in this cylinder is divided into 3 cones. That is why the dough in one cone will be pi r square h by 3. Now let me see that if I put the dough back to this cylinder, will all that dough fit inside this or not? Well, you could see that the dough inside these three cones actually filled up the whole cylinder perfectly. So the our conclusion that volume of a cone that has the same height that, that of the cylinder and the same radius of the circular base, it will be one third of the volume of cylinder that has the same height and same radius. So that is what? Pi r square h, that is the volume of this cylinder into 1 by 3 or divided by 3 to take out the volume of one cone. Now you also know that volume can be calculated by area of cross section into height where the area of cross section of that figure should be uniform. But in the shape of a cone, like this is a super stacker, you can see that the rings in the super stacker, as they move up, they decrease in size. So a cone does not have uniform cross section. That means that as we move up, the cross-sectional area is decreasing. So the cross-sectional area is not uniform as any two points. If you cut it from here, and you cut it from here, will you get the cross-sectional area as same? No. That is why volume of a cone cannot be calculated with the formula area of cross-section into height. Because cross-sectional area is decreasing as we move up. So this is not valid. Now I want to know how much dough did I use to make the nose of my snowman. So for that I need to find how much dough is inside this. That is the volume of this cone. Now I have been given that the height of this cone is 24 centimeter and the radius of a circular base is 7 centimeter. Find out the volume of this cone. Now we know that the volume of a cone is actually 1 by 3 pi r square h, where r is the radius and h is the height. So by solving this, we get
R square, that is 7 square, into H, that is 24. Now let's solve this. We get 22 into 7 into 8. And by solving this, we get 1, 2, 3, 2 centimeter cube. Now remember that whenever we calculate volume of a cone, we use the unit as centimeter cube or cubic units because volume is always represented by cubic units. So volume of a cone is actually 1 by 3 pi r square h where r is the radius of the circular base and h is the height of the cone.